with Jack Marchant in Lafayette on Meadowlark Lane on November 30th, 1984. Testing, one, two, three, four is the new role. Uh, the original old John Kaiser. Uh, Henry Kaiser. Right. Uh, Well, anyway, I wrote him a letter and asked him if he would supply the concrete for the what used to be the Mount Diablo Therapy Center. And my kid brother and uh, Essie and a lot of people were interested in it. And as I say, I wrote him this letter and he uh, called me back and said, I'll uh, furnish all the concrete you want for that project. And I've never forgotten that. And the other little story. Oh, yeah. And at the time, he didn't want me to tell anybody because he'd have every, uh, what do you call it? Pass? Everybody else yeah. had to do the same thing. Yeah. Right? And then the other little story that I like to tell is about John Jansen, who lived right down here in Lafayette. And uh, he was... John Jensen. Uh-huh. Well, Jansen, J-A. J J Jansen. And uh, he was just a sort of a buddy of mine. I used to be friends with a lot of the tractor drivers and so on here. And he was working out on the driveway uh, where one of my houses now is. And he was working with a shovel. And he said to, uh, turned and said to all of us there, I don't feel just right. And he fell over dead. My oh, gosh. So, you'll have to forgive me if I cry. Now. If you want to get back to your questions and all, and uh, <clears throat> incidentally, a fellow by the name of Jim Cunningham may be here. And what is, what's his connection? He's from the Classical. Oh, Jim Cunningham. I know him. Sure. Sure. Fine. I, I know him well. I, I guess he moved to Placerville. That's what he's been there a while. <clears throat> I bought, yeah, quite a few tires and things from him in the, over the years past. Well, this is, uh, uh, there's a few basic questions here that uh, for the Lafayette Historical. And yes, I thought you were going to have all that. <clears throat> I don't know whether you ever saw this all. If you don't mind, I just would uh, <clears throat> ask uh, when it was that you first moved to the area or came to the area. I don't know when, Mom. You came about 1950. 1950. And uh, I believe that you were... Uh, you was uh, Paul, your younger brother or older brother? Then? My younger brother. Younger brother, and you you uh, worked together, did, did you not? With yeah, for a long time. We worked together. Tim Kemp. Kensington. Yeah, we built about ninety houses in Kensington, in North Berkeley. <clears throat> yes. <coughs> I uh, he was married to uh, to uh, uh, where. We were back talking about your brother Paul, and uh, yeah. you first went into business together. Yeah, as uh, what was it? Marshawn Brothers. Marshawn yeah. Brothers. And uh, oh, but then also down here in uh, Lafayette, as Marshawn Construction. Was he in the engineer corner or the, yeah. was he? Yeah. Well, it seemed to me that uh, when 
you, you're doing all your home building, and you pretty much localized in the Lafayette area. Well, did you not to a degree, you might have we, uh, uh, gone as far as Orinda. We or, built, uh, yeah, some houses in Orinda and uh, Danville, and uh, what is it up there? Well, Roland Orchard, and then the one where you go to the first to the left before you go up there. Uh, Alhambra Road or, or Release Valley. Well, yeah, but there's one in particular, real nice. How long are you doing? Oh, well, there's Silverdale. Silver, well, Silverdale's down this way. That's, well, anyway, there's another one just up before you go over the hill. And it's really the nicest and uh, has more old timers in it than any of my other projects. It's, it's immaculate. The same people stay there and they force the restrictions. Right. And they get the city somehow to keep their streets paved. It's more than I can do here. Well, I uh, well, that's, that's good. You built a good place. I, you had a a reputation for having a lot of uh, satisfied customers. All your customers oh, yeah. were satisfied. You must have had a theory about how you were able to have a reputation like that in your follow-up system. But. Well, we always try to do our best. That You were really uh, well known for having the satisfied customers yeah. there. and uh, many places. I've got oh. a couple of little ads in the office that talk about resale to Marshawn homes. Yeah, well, that's a big plus. <coughs> no, that's true. And you had a, a style of your own there, this ranch style. Did you did you have a, a well, rural no. background or something like that to develop your styling? And no. Uh, Books I read and so on, and uh, I like the colonial the best, but I built a few contemporaries. And there's a doctor that's a, lives in the first to the left on the silver down. Well, it doesn't matter. And uh, there's one. Radiologist of John Lee. Yeah, yeah. And there's one. Uh, Contemporary, just up the street here, but most of them are yeah. colonial. The western, western, right, western right. Bridge. I, well, they, it, it seems to last with the years, and it's very popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, you uh, had a career before you. I mean, you had a career of teaching, didn't you, before you started uh, in business with your brother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that was in between during the war. Yeah. I see. I see. I remember that name, yeah, Laurie, Marchand and Laurie. Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, I remember Paul had a very tragic ending. He was uh, flying up in the your brother Paul, yeah, up in the mountains and uh, to Bishop, and they uh, got a big storm and uh, he got killed in the, <coughs> the plane crashed. I, I remember hearing of that. Well, we do see uh, Shirley from time to time, and, and married Teller Weinman down. They live down in Woodside here now. And the, um, Teller was an old friend, and, and every once in a while we see them at a. His father was a Uh, Dewey, yeah, Teller's father back in Oakland, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, we still have a light out front. From your state. 
Yeah. From the old, uh, yeah. yeah from right <laughs> there. Yeah. Those, the gas lanterns, right. Uh, I know you bought this land where Silver Springs is now yeah. from my father about 1953, I think. And uh, there was, uh, my grandfather had a cabin up in the hills there, beyond, up in the hills above Silver yeah. Springs. And yeah. Those old gas lanterns came from this uh, around Lake Merritt, the city yeah. of Oakland, and yeah. he had a friend that when they electrified the the, the streetlights down there, why he salvaged a few of those gas lanterns, and uh, they had a whole string of them up in the cabin site. I have one. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> they're electrified, yeah, but they're quite uh, uh, elaborate with the wrought iron. And you seem to, uh, about your your pattern of building, you seem to like to, uh, you, you bought enough land where you could build several houses at once. And, oh, uh, yeah. did you, you had a theory about that, I'm sure. To, uh, well, yeah. I had a good friend, and still do, of uh, all of his son, John. John. All right. How are you? Hamlin. Ollie Hamlin. I've never met you. Well, I got some information, so uh, I didn't look it out. Are you Yeah, about your theory of how you go about buying enough land to make oh, a development. Then. Yeah. Uh, got together with Lee Shell, right. an old friend whom I brought into Rotary, and uh, we got together and uh, work out an estimate of what the land would cost to develop, and uh, work from there. And uh, we bought uh, in uh, groups of land that would give us a chance to uh, do a nice job, and uh, mostly this colonial style. California Ranch or whatever. I had a book one time that uh, went into these old colonials back east and uh, just kind of fell in love with that style. And uh, so, for the most part, they are this uh, California Colonial Ranch. Right, they're will. easy to maintain. Uh, well, they don't they're attractive. And, uh, as I say, we'd buy a, a piece of, Lee and I would get together and make estimates of what the property would yield, how many sites, right. and uh, then we'd, uh, if it looked good, we'd go ahead with it. Michel is an old, old friend that I brought into Rotary, as I did many of the Old timers in Lafayette, Walt Miller, retired plumber. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, I see Lee. Uh, he's still very pleasant, and uh, yeah. he's as nice a fellow as you ever run into. So, okay. <clears throat> well, um, you, you, this, the reputation that you carried about the satisfied customers uh, I hear all the time and, and I'm sure that you you're glad to hear it whenever people remark about that and uh, oh, yeah. sure. you still call us up and want to know if we have plans in the house or if they can do the subcontractors that we disposed of most of our records so it doesn't do much and you did stay with uh, with your same subcontractors a good deal of the time good deal but yeah no, and then we'd shop just to uh, yeah. make sure that uh, we were getting the right prices. Float sheet metal, for instance, are old, old friends of ours. Yeah, well, that that makes it flow very nicely if you have a working relationship, I'm sure. <clears throat> then uh, 1968 here, the... Uh, City of Lafayette Incorporated, and I know you were one of the first councilmen. No. Yeah. Uh, right. When right. they came in, was that a was that a positive experience for you to, oh, to yeah. be on the first council? Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. 
Yeah. And originally the uh, council acted as both the planning commission and the uh, and the council and the council until they got there. and then later on we realized it was too big a job for the council alone to handle, so we formed the planning commission. And uh, of course, that was a big step in the right direction. A huge step. I know one of the first things they went after was the uh, the signs, I guess, on the boulevard. The real estate guys were probably the worst defenders, and having these big, huge, garish signs. And yeah, the sign kind of project was one of the first uh, right. things I that the city that wanted to go that. after. I'd forgotten that. <clears throat> you remember a guy named Tom Duffy had a sign oh as big as a billboard? <laughs> yeah, he's still around. I think he is. Oh, yeah. yeah. He lives in a funny little house up on Dinky Little Road. And uh, that was important. And it does, that oh. was a, uh, a very For vivid a thing there. of changing the looks of the boulevard. For a while there, it seemed like everybody in town was trying to have the biggest sign. Yeah. And that was on the board, the design project. Design. Right, right. Lafayette yeah. Design Project. Right, that yeah. took a while, and that was a major step forward. Yeah, it? yeah. Did you? What, did you? Con, well, you continued doing some building and developing after uh, uh, after the city incorporated. When you, did you find that the <clears throat> permit process and all changed a, a good deal after the city incorporated? Well, some. Uh, we still have to get our, our uh, approval from the county at that time. Do you remember Rudy Krinks? Yes. Oh, yes. He was a good friend of ours. Your old Rudy. In uh, Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We still see a. Uh, oh, heavens. The doc. What's his name, Doc? Oh. In the building department, Tony De Jesus. De Jesus, right? Yeah, we still see him. Yeah, that's him. he's been around a long time. I, I understand. And some tell me it's true, and some not that he owns quite a little land around Lafayette. It could be. I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that. That's true. Yeah. But uh, you. Uh, what would you say now? You you were one of their first uh, councilmen. What would you say was the pluses and the minuses of incorporating Lafayette? Okay. Well, I think it was a good thing. The uh, Rinda is still now going through that process, and uh, uh, I think Lafayette made three tries at it before they... They finally voted it in, and uh, it's an think ed you're right. educational process yeah. for the people. Yeah, there certainly was that time when everybody in Lafayette was trying to have the biggest sign. I think Tom Duffy <laughs> did them all. I think he outdid them all. But, but uh, it's it, it really shows now the boulevard. In recent years, they've uh, taken the wires down and gone underground and. Yeah, that makes last, a huge uh, difference. And that project we did up there that I'm trying to think of, they're all underground. That was Silverdale. You mean Happy well, Valley Dale? Yeah, Happy Valley Dale. That's the one. And that has more original owners and more. Yeah. And, uh, that's a good sign. Yeah. And they get. They get that. Their streets paved. I don't know how they do it. I've tried for years to get this street paved. And, you know, no luck. Uh, well, a lot of streets need some help, all right. And going back then a few years, you were uh, were you on the original board of the Lafayette Federal Savings? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I I know you've been with them a long time. And uh, the old Lafayette uh, Fed. We used right. to live in a house. Up the hill here McGraw. on the McGraw, and uh, uh, we would meet there and for hours and 
talk, plan this thing. And uh, uh, just about, we were going to have a, a bank, which is a little more flexible than the uh, savings federal yeah. savings. But uh, we found that there was another group that was about ready to file. And they talked us into joining with them. And that was so that, you know, the original Wallace, hell of a nice guy, Morris. Lawrence Wallace, and uh, Harry yeah. Morrison, and uh, Don Dowdy, Lloyd Payton. Yeah. Those were all old names, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, now it's all Cap Fed. Cap Fed, right. Uh, I have uh, Bruce Howard is a good friend That's of mine. Bruce also Howard. a nice guy. Yeah, and I and play tennis with him, and uh, he is a sweetheart of a fellow. Yeah, right? and very interested in the children's hospital. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> he's retired, and, really uh, nice but guy. he's the busiest retired <laughs> fellow I know. The Children's Hospital and the Oakland Museum yeah. and the Audubon Society and... The, Save the Redwood League, and but he's just a nice fellow, and Jeanette, yeah. But yeah. He, I guess he started in the early days uh, when it was first formed, too, wasn't it? Bruce had been on the board of the Lafayette Federal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, for Don a long Dowdy time, he still is, I guess. Yeah. 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 Dowdy, yeah. Yeah. Harry yeah. yeah. Morrison was the first president of the Medellin. He made himself president, and... Uh, chairman of the board, too. And then there's an old story I like to tell about. And I don't know if sure. you want or not. Sure. Well, one day he used to he used to drink a lot. And we kept telling him that our little association couldn't afford it. So uh, one day I took my this king, all one like it, and my Snow cap, they call it. Uh, and I put a, had a patch ready in my pocket, and I stood up, and I said, like a pirate, but I, I, I managed to point to something on the wall, and I said, look, fellas, up there, there's a spider on the wall or something. And I had in my pocket this patch to put over one eye, <laughs> and, uh, uh, King just like this, and I got up and shouted, Beware, you pirates! I'm old man Silver, and I'll get you if you don't do things right around this place. And <laughs> it really went over. <laughs> they all laughed. Oh, Good my. for you. Good for you. <laughs> well, that's still going strong. I, uh, uh, I guess since it became cat-fed now, yeah, uh, yeah. why it's stronger than ever. And, uh, they seem to be doing all right. And I have a good friend down there by the name of Terry Moran. Real good. Uh-huh. That's always a good one to know. The advisory board right. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Now, one more thing that I, I remember that weren't you connected with, or maybe it was some of the property that you had on this uh, senior citizens, Lafayette senior citizens oh, uh, yeah. project on Moraga oh, Yeah, we owned a big bunch of property in there. And Hirsch Morton and I uh, designed a project once there that we thought would be great. And I got up and some of those lots were quite deep and yeah. large there. I got up and made a talk about it. And every uh, buddy in town seemed like booed me. So I said, well, I'll tell you. It isn't worth it to me to have to walk down the streets and see people that I would like to have as friends, that I value as old friends. Uh, not being friendly to me. And uh, I gained a lot of friendship that way. And uh, uh, 
Well, so what kind of a project did you have in mind? A multiple? You mean? Uh, I don't know what was it. That's but uh, that seems to be very stable and. Uh, oh, yeah. Road, down first Oh, you own the whole block in it? Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well, yeah. <clears throat> so they didn't buy it all. You had more than what you sold for the project. That project seems to be very stable. And oh, yeah. Well kept up. And, uh, you know, tremendous waiting list. Is it? Yeah. Well, they finally have a project like that in Arinda now, and uh, people objected at first, but it just seems to be a, such a necessary thing. Yeah. yeah. At the, right, there's a lot of happy people out at Rossmore. Oh, yeah. Friend of ours. Well, Hearst Morton goes out there right there. Hearst lives in Rossmore? Yeah. I didn't know that. <clears throat> that must be recent. I, I didn't know that. He doesn't seem oh, uh, yeah. old enough, you know, for that. Though. We used to have an awful lot of good times out at his place. He's we a know. jolly type, yeah. Yeah, so is. And I guess he, did he work for you? Yes. Well, Hurts, uh, when originally, he... way back, yeah, he uh, worked for Paul and I uh, as a draftsman. Right. And, uh, Anyway, that's when we were really going. And a funny little office in the back there. And yeah. One day he caught his ring on a bale of wire. And he went scooting over the top of this bale of wire. And it's a wonder he wasn't killed. But right, some, right. Somehow he landed just right. Got out. Yeah. Taylor used to have a lot of good times. Still do. Yeah. Her. Well, Hirsch is uh, very active in the city doing that. Yeah. And he yeah. devoted a lot of time. He Walnut Creek now. He's, he says he still feels like he's part of Lafayette. Right. Well, Jack, I think that's all the questions that I had. I, I'd like to uh, take note this uh, Your article word. in the uh, paper there that would provide some more background. But Take uh, it along. It's yours. Well, that would be fine, and we'd put it all together. And uh, <clears throat> the, you're a very important fellow for the city of Lafayette, and they wanted to do it this way. They, Someone explained to me about oral history. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate about the dates and the places because it's just whatever you remember, and uh, this is what's important to get the person's own uh, reflections on it. So I appreciate your time and effort very much. And, uh, oh, more than that. And uh, I will now uh, This is the end of uh, the oral history with Jack Marchant uh, on uh, November 30th, 1984. That's all.